Hi, my name is Emma and I'm here with Emma Bernard, who is a curator here at the Natural History Museum. And we've been talking all about sharks and how they're actually probably a lot older than you might think. And if you haven't seen our previous video on this, do make sure you go and check that out. But for now, we're going to talk a little bit more about these amazing animals. So first of all, Emma. Hello, welcome. Hi, Thank you for being here. Now, we know sharks have been around for a very long time. How many species do we think there has actually been of sharks? So over the millions of years that sharks have been around, so we think there's probably been about 5,000 different species of shark that's ever existed. Wow, that's a lot of sharks. And what kind of fossils do we tend to find of sharks? So actually one of the most common fossils that you can find is actually of shark's teeth. And that's because they've got an awful lot of teeth. So um, over the course of a lifetime, um, a shark can produce between 20,000 and 40,000 teeth. So what we've got here is about 30,000 shark's teeth. And that's because wow. sharks have got this sort of conveyor belt system of teeth. So as one tooth falls out the front, there's another tooth behind it ready to replace it. So if you're one shark producing on average about 30,000 teeth, the chances are a few of them will become fossils. Mm -hmm. So shark's teeth, very, very common. And um, what's not so common about sharks is actually their soft tissue. So shark skeleton is made from cartilage rather than bone. And because that's much softer, it doesn't tend to fossilize very well. But if we get the right chem um, sorry, chemical soup, the right sort of conditions, mm -hmm. we get, can get that soft tissue preserved. So this is actually a um, vertebrate from a, sh um, a shark that's about 50 million years old. So this is basically the spine of this shark. So these are all the individual vertebrae um, running up. So this is quite rare and quite special. Um, and other parts about sharks, so we can find their dermal denticles. So basically uh, their scales, the skin from the shark. And also we can find even fossilized poo or what we like to call a coprolite. Okay. <laughs> so coprolite, to give it the proper name. Uh -huh. Um, and coprolite, I find wow. it really fascinating because this is from a 50 million year old shark. But what's really cool about them is that we can often look inside them and we can actually find scales and bones and even little teeth. So we can work out what these ancient sharks were feeding on 50 million years ago. Wow, that's really amazing that actually the poo is fossilized yeah. as well. Incredible. Now, we know sharks have taken a lot of different forms over time, but how far do we have to go back to find the first animal that we would recognize as being a shark? Yeah, so uh, sharks have been around, swimming around in our seas for over 400 million years. Now, some of these earliest sharks you might not sort of recognize as sort of the stereotypical sharks we think of today. But if we go back to the Carboniferous period, so about 350 to 300 million years ago, Sharks were very well established then, and their body plan looked, I mean, would have looked very similar to a lot of sharks that we think of today swimming around in our seas. So yeah, about 350 million years ago. Now there's been some very bizarre looking sharks in the past as well, but there's some of them that are, they kind of look shark-like, but they're not quite shark-like. Sharks, they're not quite sharks, is that correct? That's right, yeah. Okay. So um, I mentioned that sharks um, are we've got cartilage and a skeleton. So basically nowadays there's two main groups of fish. You've got your bony fish. So think about like cod, tuna, herring. Their skeleton is very similar to our own. It's made of bone. Whereas a cartilaginous group of fish, so that includes sharks, rays, chimeras and skates, um, they're defined because their skeleton is made from cartilage rather than bone. So kind of similar to the same material as like our ears and noses. So with the sharks, you've also got the, as I mentioned, skates, rays and chimeras. Now, a lot of these um, ancient, um, older groups of cartilaginous fish, like the chimeras, were sometimes mistaken for sharks. So I think one of the most um, iconic ones is uh, one called Helicoprian. So I've got a cast of this one here. So this is sometimes referred to as the buzzsaw shark. Basically, this is its lower jaw. Wow. So um, Helicoprian, over mil millions of years, evolved its lower jaw. It basically gradually extended out and started to curve around. So think about like a buzzsaw, like maybe you might have yeah, yeah. like a shed or something. So this is its lower jaw and basically it's spiraling around there. So each one of these little bits that you can see is an individual tooth. Um, and for a long time, we actually did think that these were sharks. As we found more fossils and our knowledge of the fossil record increased, we realised that these actually belong to chimeras rather than sharks. So there's a bit of a difference between chimeras and sharks. So I mentioned they've got a cartilage and a skeleton, um, but there's lots and lots of differences, but perhaps two of the main ones are um, their jaws. So sharks, their upper and lower jaw is only attached to muscles and tendons, it's disarticulated. Whereas chimeras, their upper jaw is fused with the rest of their skull, similar to our own. 
So obviously think about we can move our lower jaw up and down, side to side. Yeah, look great. <laughs> um, and so chimeras are the exact same. Their upper jaw is fused, whereas sharks, their upper and lower jaw are disarticulated. So if you ever see any sort of usually nature documentaries, usually something like a great white coming to bite something, you'll see that both their upper and lower jaw extend out a little bit further. So they're much more likely to take a bigger bite and capture their prey. So chimeras, upper jaw is fused. And the other difference is their teeth. So I mentioned sharks, I've got the 30,000 teeth Mm -hmm. or there, thereabouts. Whereas chimeras um, typically have three pairs um, of teeth that basically just constantly grow through their lifetime. So they don't shed their teeth like sharks. They've only got three sets and they basically just um, continue to grow. So they've got crushing and grinding dentition. And actually chimeras branched off from the sharks um, rays uh, in skates about 400 million years ago so they've had a long time to evolve into a whole assortment of different weird and wonderful forms yeah the distant relatives then the, yes. the chimeras oh amazing and do we actually know when modern sharks evolved yeah so um we can actually um go back into the fossil record so about the jurassic period about 190 million years ago so when the dinosaurs were busy stomping around up on lands um, during the Jurassic period, most modern groups of sharks that are swimming in our oceans today, that was when they actually evolved. And they, but they managed to survive mass extinction. Yeah. How did, how did they manage to survive when the dinosaurs didn't? Yeah, really good question. So um, sharks are amazing animals. They've survived lots of mass extinction events, including the five big mass extinction events that we talk about. Perhaps the most iconic one being the one at the end of the Cretaceous period. Um, the, the, the asteroid coming... Um, about 66 million years ago that killed off non-avian dinosaurs. However, a lot of um, sharks did go extinct at the time. It tended to be the larger sharks. However, a lot of the smaller sharks that lived in the deeper oceans and um, also were quite small and they had a wide variety and they ate lots of different food sources, they actually survived. And they actually got through that extinction event relatively unscathed. Mm. Well, you mentioned big sharks there. We've obviously got to talk about Megalodon everybody's favourite prehistoric shark. When did Megalodon arrive on the scene? Yeah, so it's such an iconic shark is Megalodon. So Megalodon evolved about 23 million years ago. But if we look back in the fossil record, we can basically go back through its family tree uh, to a shark called Otodus oblicus, which was swimming around in the waters about 55 million years ago. So here in the trolley, we've actually got a set of Otodus oblicus teeth. And we can think of this shark as being Megalodon's great, 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 great grandmother. So these teeth are obviously very, very sharp here. And this shark would have been about 10 metres in size when it was alive. Um, so we've got the Todus oblicus teeth here. And this is actually a Megalodon tooth. Oh, wow. So, so we can big. immediately see how much bigger Megalodon yeah. probably would have been. So we're thinking about 20, maybe up to 24 metres in size now for Megalodon. There's actually some scientists that believe we can um, extend Megalodon's range back into um, about 105 million years ago to a group of sharks called Cretolamna. Uh, But hopefully as we find more fossils um, over the years through the different um, age gaps, we can actually sort of plug these gaps in Megalodon's family tree. Wow, just so much to learn about. It's such an incredible shark, right? (laughs) And now bringing it kind of closer to a modern era, what's the most recent group of sharks to have evolved? Yeah, so um, I think the most recent group of sharks is a group called the Carcharhinids. And they evolved about 20 million years ago. And perhaps one of the most iconic um, group of sharks from that one is the hammerhead sharks. You know, that iconic hammerhead-esque head. Um, And I find these sharks absolutely amazing. Um, All sharks actually have got this superpower, um, as I like to call it. So it's a special organ that's in front of their head, in front of their rostrum. It's called the Ampulae of Lorenzini, which is a bit of a mouthful. (laughs) Catchy name. (laughs) uh, Yeah, very catchy name. Um, But basically it detects electrical pulses. So every time you move, your muscles um, contract and expand and it gives off a little electrical pulse that sharks are able to detect whilst using this organ there in Puglia of Lorenzini. So with um, hammerhead sharks, because they've got that big front head there, um, that organ is quite large. So they're um, really great at detecting their prey that might bury down into the sediment or even hunting in really dark waters. So they can't um, really see very well, but they can definitely detect um, animals that are swimming around. Wow. Hammerheads are one of my favourite sharks, so now I love them even more after that. (laughs) Great. Well, thank you so much, Emma, for going through that. That was absolutely amazing. And I definitely have a lot more respect for sharks now than I did before. Well, who knew that sharks had such an incredible and bizarre history? 
Let us know what your favourite fact was in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.